ground tyres that needed replays. We start at Portman Road, Ipswich. At Portman Road, Ipswich Town were hoping to assert Premier League authority over Wolves of Division 1, perhaps believing they'd done the hardest part in their first game at Molyneux. But Wolves took this game to Ipswich from the start. Robbie Dennison's free kick exploiting the uncertainties in the Ipswich Town defence and Wolves' young find, Lee Mills, cracking it past Craig Forrest. A year ago, Mills was playing part-time football in Barnsley. Wolves didn't sit back on their lead, though. The second, a well-rehearsed free-kick drill, Andy Thompson's drive clipping David Linegan on the way through, and Ipswich in deep trouble before half-time. Town may have received a rocket at the interval from their management, and they got the start to the second half they needed so badly when Steve Palmer seized on a loose ball in the box to mark his 100th appearance with his second goal of the season. But Wolves' composure held and unrestrained joy at the final whistle for their travelling support, led by Billy Wright, the last Wolves captain to lift the FA Cup back in 1960. these clubs had been a hard-fought affair and both managers said the first goal would be critical in the replay when City striker Wayne Allison fouled Steve Brown in trying to help out his defence Vic Callow had no doubts and it gave Darren Pitcher the chance to fire Charlton ahead there were many near things as Bristol rallied in the second half but with their own defence stretched Kim Grant went on alone and found the finish to delight the Charlton support in their superb new stadium. A brave new beginning here for Charlton. The last time they reached the quarter-finals was 1947, when they went on to win the FA Cup. So the draw for the sixth round sees Premier League clubs against First Division opposition.